there. So we are going to be playing the Moon Silver. Before I start playing, if you want to uh, actually play this game and be entertained by it by actually playing it, I would recommend you go ahead and buy it and play it before you watch this video because it's kind of a uh, one-off thing. If you watch it, you're probably going to ruin playing it by yourself. So, uh, spoiler alert, don't get angry at me if you watch this and then say I ruined the game for you. There we go. The Moon Silver. Uh, let's see. Am I too loud? I don't think I'm too loud. Okay, so, to begin, welcome. This is the Moon Silver. We're going to be doing a playthrough. And, uh,. There is no saving in this game, because it's so short that he doesn't think you need a save. So, we're just gonna play through it. And here we are, the Moon Silver. Alright. So we got some, uh, wrenches here on the chairs. Looks like a pretty messed up place. There's a lot of smoke. Daniel was a quiet man, who spent his life lost in the books of old, or lost in his own thoughts. He wondered where the barrels had come from, and who had put them there. Okay. What are we doing? Is this the way up? Yeah, this is the way up. Hey, would you look at that? We don't need a flashlight anymore, and we are on the ocean. Now, I have played this game before, but I forgot a lot about it. Uh, it was a while ago. So, we're just going to come over here. And it looks like we have these little huts that we live in. What's this? Oh, yeah. That's to uh, recharge our flashlight. Got candles, books, what's this say? There is an evil man on this island, and I know him well. We played together as youths. We have cried together. We have eaten together. We have loved the same woman. Betrayed the same woman. He is my constant companion, and my worst enemy. He puppets my arms, legs, and mouth to his own selfish ends, and secretly hurts anyone, everyone I love as I watch, helpless, with their unshed, unfelt blood on their hands. My hands, on my hands. He gifts my flesh with indescribable pleasures, and blights my soul with unutterable despair. His name is Sin, and we are irrevocably bound together. Surely there exists no hell worse than this. Well, okay then. Uh, what? Apparently they get stuck on the same screen at the same time. Okay. Abel read to escape. Daniel read to feed his lofty, strange thoughts. Issa read to pass the time. But Ellie? As far as Abel knew, she hadn't opened a book in years. What did she do all day? He didn't know. Sometimes he worried about her. He worried about all of them. Were they... Were they as melancholy as he was? Okay, so he step away. Come on. Apparently it comes back onto the screen. Um... That's locked. And... What childlike emptiness I feel to find the most peaceful solace in fantasy, to find the masquerades of truth more vivid than reality. What sort of twisted villains were the ancient writers to taunt us with unreachable worlds more beautiful than our own? We have had enough store. We have enough store food. 
to live long lives. When our wood runs out, we will be cold, but only so cold as to be uncomfortable. The water is rising, but it will be many years before it reaches our homes. Technically, we survive, but to what end? This island is all the world we know, and it is nothing but the broken pieces of a fairy tale. So yeah, this is a very bleak place and disturbing people and poetry. And there is a fire still going. What were you and Abel doing at his house yesterday while I was climbing the mountain? He answered, casually flipping through the book on our table. It was covered in dust. Well, it doesn't look like there's... Ellie was laying on the bed. Daniel came in. She scowled at him suspiciously and beautifully. What were you and Issa doing in the old power building? What were you talking about? Something of a mystery on our hands. Where are all the other people? A scary thought. It's a very smoke filled room. What's this? Abel often visited Daniel. He loved to talk, and Daniel loved to listen. Issa and I were out for a walk, said Abel, as he entered. I thought I'd stop by before you got caught up in a book. Daniel put his book down. Hello, he said. His expression confused Abel. Wait a minute. Daniel, okay, Daniel was a person who read books. And I have yet to go in this building. Again, more dust and stuff. I remember when the moon still shined. When each night was bathed in warm silver, and the shadows were mysterious and friendly, and the island was a place of joy. That was many years ago. Since it disappeared, this place has become cold and stark, plagued by an inexplicable sense of loss and despondency. Daniel and Ellie are young. They do not feel it. They don't remember what the world used to be like. But Abel and I do and we are both filled with longing for intangible joys that it can no longer provide, for friends that do not exist, for feelings that cannot be re reasonably felt. When I was younger, I smiled because I felt like smiling. Now, that smile is a disguise. These are very bitter people. She took the knife from the shelf. The blade was dull and rusty but it was still pointed. She was not smiling. Hey, look, it's a key. And it doesn't open that. I believe the box was in this room. Ah, there it is. And it doesn't open that either. So let's go take a bit look around the rest of the island. Naturally, you're just gravitated towards this door here. Come back when night falls. This is a very eerie place. Quite eerie. I'm saying that she knows more than she's telling us, said Ellie. What is your problem with Issa, Daniel said putting his book down. 
He was annoyed at being interrupted here. Yeah. So. My problem is that she's a liar, said Ellie angrily, fiddling with the knobs on the machine as she paced around, and that I have to keep expe explaining this to you over and over again. You don't know her like I know her. Exactly. You're not an impartial judge, he said. She keeps the chapel locked, and she's the only one with a key, said Ellie, leaning on the barrels and folding her arms. So you're saying she took it, he said. Question is, what is it? Hmm. She sat down beside the flashlight. What about Ellie? Has Ellie mentioned anything to you? She said. She didn't take it either, he said. Nor did I, and nor did Abel. And yet he's gone. Not he's. And yet it's gone. Something in the chapel. The rusted junk cast shadows on the opposite wall. How do you know Abel didn't take it, he said. Because I trust him, she said. He's a dismal man, but he wouldn't he would never hurt any of us. Do you trust Ellie? Daniel didn't answer immediately. I trust all of you, he said. Because that's how we have to live. Daniel, you're the last one I gave the key to, said Isa. Daniel stared at the mysterious control panel control panels. He didn't meet her eyes. He never met anyone's eyes. I didn't take it, he said. Why would I take it? I'm the one that told you it was missing. Lisa kept a smile on her face, although she didn't feel like smiling. A strange acidic smell entered from the pipe, or emitted from the pipe. These conversations were not new. Long ago, Isa had learned to love Abel despite and for his despondency. She hugged him as the new wind tossed her long gray hair around. Okay, that's kind of loud. They reached rooms and strolled leisurely through them. Alright, can we get back out there now? Isa can remember when the old buildings still stood here, filled with families. I'm sorry, he said, and he cried because he often cried during these talks. For what, she said. For a lot of things. Now the question is, does this key lead inside here? And I don't want to do that until I power up my flashlight. There we go. Alright. So, this looks like the chapel. Daniel was still thinking about his talk with Abel the day before, as he absently mindedly absent mindedly picked up the book. Something caught his eye, or rather the lack of something. The Moon Silver was gone. So that's the title of the game. What's this Moon Silver? 
He stared at the empty dais for some time, struggling to comprehend this simple, shocking fact. Had someone moved it? Issa, perhaps. She was the only one with the key to the Chapel of Infinite Light. But Elie or Abel could have borrowed it from her, as he had done, or taken it. Regardless, he had to tell the others. The Word of Hector the Fourth Again, the moon came to Hector in dream. The woodland teeth is vanquished, it said. Your people are safe for now, but it still waits, lurking in the depths. It fears the moon silver, and it will not dare appear again while the holy document remains in your possession. But know this, should the moon silver ever be destroyed, even my divine light will not be able to save you from the wrath of the woodland teeth and the darkness of hell. Keep it safe. Keep it ready. And may you live in prosperity on this island that I have given you. Let your prosperity be a sign that the words I speak are true. So. Moon Silver, it's gone. Did he let out something? Okay. It's pretty dark. In fact, it's very dark. Uh, but I don't think it's night yet. The night was wild and cold. The monstrous tracks leading from the hatch were brand new, but the wind quickly erased them. to me. Uh, yeah. How do we, uh, This is not terrifying at all. Let's uh, recharge our flashlight. Ellie was uneasy. The darkness had, ever, had never felt this menacing before. It seemed alive, watchful. lived among the crates of dried food. They were perhaps the last animals left alive. Okay. This isn't creepy at all. What was the button again? Ellie? Daniel's voice echoed around. only silence. Silence. She couldn't explain the feeling. It was as if so, as if something was lurking around every corner, staying out of sight, staying ahead of her. Just saying, that puts me uneasy. Daniel 
Daniel heard soft, scratching footsteps behind him. He turned around and shined his light, flashlight around the tunnel. Nothing. I turned a little bit too much. Okay, does this recharge? There we go. Okay, which way to go? Let's see which way this goes. He called again. Ellie? Still no answer. But he heard the footsteps again. I feel like I'm getting lost in this maze. And any second now I'm gonna hear something behind me. He didn't even have time to cry out as the shadow silhouetted in his flashlight beam laundering. Well, we got knives and whatnot, so can't you defend yourself? Is there something I'm supposed to see here? I guess not. second out I'm gonna see something just as it jump scared I don't like jump scares. I want a gun or something. So we're backtracking. And what's down here again? Ah yes. This is what we want. The code is long forgotten. Nobody had been below in many years. So, oh, yeah, this isn't a creepy place. They had to know the truth. 
and Hector would not tell it. So down here where nobody would find him, he wrote on scraps of paper, maybe someday someone would discover them. Well, I don't see any paper. Um, reason to come here, but she had looked everywhere else. She clutched the old knife in her right hand. Yesterday, the Moonsilver went missing. Today, Ellie, Daniel, and Abel were all nowhere to be found. She knew the word of Hector by heart. The sinister implications were not lost on her. Ellie, she called. Daniel? Abel? Abel heard her and answered. I'm here. There was something strange about his voice. Something Issa didn't like. What are you doing here? I'm reading of ages past, he said. Do you know where Ellie and Daniel are, she said. I do not, he said. They are missing, she said. They are missing and the moon silver is missing. Do you understand me? Do you understand what this implies? I do, he said. Night will fall in a few hours, and we need to stick together. We can sleep in the same house, mine or yours. We'll keep the fire burning, we'll keep the door locked, and we'll pray, Abel. We'll pray to be unseen. We'll pray to the unseen moon for mercy and protection. Are you happy here, Isa? We can't stay in the dark. It thrives in the dark. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Abel, please. There were tears in his eyes, and he struggled to control his voice. Lisa, I know you. I know every inch of you, and I know every corner of your mind. You aren't happy. None of us are happy. Lisa didn't respond. I'm staying here. The tears were flowing freely now. I would... I would like it if you stayed with me, Issa. Please, stay with me. It will find you, Abel. I let it out, Issa. I destroyed the moon silver. Issa was shocked and silent. I burned it yesterday, after I talked with Daniel. Her eyes were filling with betrayed, angry tears. What? Abel, no. Why? Do you want to be dragged to hell? Do you want us to be dragged there with you? We're already in hell. This island, this horrible, barren, lonely island. This place of sin. This is hell. I saw the blasphemous, blasphemous scraps of paper Jeremiah found those many years ago. I read them before they were destroyed. Perhaps I was the only one who did, and I did not believe them. 
but I was but I have lived life since then, and I have seen the truth of their words. Isa could not respond, as tears streamed down her face. She just kept walking towards the sound of his voice, the knife clutched in her hand. She could see him ahead, her flashlight beam cut through the silky fog. Sickly fog. He was sitting in a chair, a book in his lap. As she approached, she could see that he was crying too. I believe the word of Hector, she said, and I will not go to hell. Please trust me. Please. I believe the word of Hector, she said again, and she put the knife to her chest, point first. No. No, Isa, please don't. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone. I love you. She spat tearfully. I love you so much. She closed her eyes and pushed. She remembered where the heart was located from one of her father's old books. Abel was too slow to catch her falling body. He knelt beside her and sobbed for the first time. Not for the first time, for some time. He was not a strong young man anymore, but Issa's body was light. He would take her out to the water. She had always loved the water. But then what? Read? Read until it found him? No, he didn't feel like reading anymore. He was ready to be rid of this entire accursed island, books and all. He would simply wander, aimlessly and freely, take one last look at the island feel the wind blowing the memories away. And then, when night fell, he would return. And wait. So that is the Moon Silver. Um, I feel like there was a bit of dialogue that I missed. But yeah, it was fairly interesting the first time you play it. If uh, you don't know what you're doing, you're going to wander around a lot. And, uh... Yeah. Kind of an interesting little story. This guy got so... sick of his life that he ended it in the worst way possible, apparently. So, uh... Yeah. was a bit of stuff that I missed, I think. But, that's pretty much the entire game. Nothing ever really happens until the very end. It's a nice little interesting story. Like I said, it's like three bucks. That playthrough was half as long as my first playthrough, and uh, I didn't record my first playthrough, but you can spend a bit of time wandering around if you haven't watched someone else play it. But, I understand that a lot of people probably don't want to play it, or would rather just watch someone else play it. But anyway, that is all for now. Bye-bye.